Well, each educational institution has a regulations uh -huh. and rules for each student to study abroad. These regulations and rules states that when you gain three consecutive warning letters or four consecutive non-consecutive non warning letters, you will be dismissed mm -hmm. from your scholarship with a total um, allowances uh, you have to pay for the, for the ministry. Mm -hmm. But once you dismiss from your scholarship and you decide to continue your study either in Kuwait or outside Kuwait and get your, your, your bachelor degree, you will be exempted from the, uh, the allowances and the money that. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's so merciful for them because some students, they cannot, you know, bear being outside of state of Kuwait like as a foreigner. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they fail to gain the degree that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they have nothing else but to come back to Kuwait and finish the higher education. Exactly. So they are not uh, obligated to pay every, every penny as long as they get the degree exactly. after that. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Do you have a special criteria for the students to pass? Like not everyone is eligible to get the, the scholarship and go outside of Kuwait. Mm -hmm. You have to have some kind of measurements, some kind of criteria, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, exactly. Uh, first of all, he should be Kuwaiti citizen. Uh, his age should be 17 and will not exceed to, 20 th to 23. 23. Mm -hmm. um, the validation of high school, uh, it shouldn't exceed two years from the, from the date of graduation from high school. His GPA should be compatible with the assigned scholarship majors and GPAs that we announce them yearly. Uh, let's say from 80% he can apply, which equals uh, to three points. 80% to yeah. apply. Yeah. This is uh, for uh, everybody from the high school or some, some particular yeah, particular, divisions? Yeah, particular majors. majors. Uh, let's say the, um, the engineering, uh, all fields of engineering and all fields of business uh, studies uh, and all fields of science majors, mm -hmm. they require uh, 80%. Um, whereas the dentistry and medicine and pharmacy, different. it is totally different because we have a limitation of numbers and the, um, uh, the, the schools, they require much higher uh, criteria to accept our student. Uh, they're supposed to have 90% mm. for their scholarship. This is the minimum. Well, I hope everybody gets the opportunity I to go so. outside the state of Kuwait and study and pursue their higher education. I hope that. Mrs. Wafa Habib Hussain, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're still talking about the same thing, but now we would like to go to another report. And this one, it's all about something else, but regarding the same matter. It's about Dr. Hanan al Mutawa, and she is a co-founder and CEO of Royal Britannia Kindergarten and a lot more. But before of that, don't forget you're still with us right here at To The Point. It's very important to give a strong foundation for children to be able to bridge the gap between what we call nursery or kindergarten learning and primary. So having a structured curriculum to allow children to learn the maths, the English writing skills, which comes down to what we call numeracy and literacy, and allow them to then go and access the uh, primary age group seamlessly. The English National Curriculum learns science, technology, English, arts and maths. And in that environment, we teach hydroponics, we teach gardening, we teach the values of looking after the environment, recycling, um, the energy such as water, electricity. So science is a fundamental element in our curriculum. Hence, you'll see the hydroponics garden, the indoor garden allows children to learn by true living products. And when the children arrive in the morning, they do circle time and they're met with teachers who are totally excitable and the curriculum is developed through them. Um, after sort of circle time they would then do a plenary which is explaining to the child what they're going to do for the rest of the day and of course the activities based on STEAM, science, technology, English, arts and maths 
is structured in a way that allows the children and the teacher to move through one zone to another zone from the learning zone, from the um, knowledge zone, from the sharing zone, from the caring zone to baking zone, to gymnastics, to arts, to music, different zones of learning and that's what the teacher facilitates for the children. They are facilitators of learning for the child's welfare. Basically take over the classroom and they become the teachers in one sense. They tell us how they wish to learn. We give them the tools and they use those tools to facilitate their learning. And in science uh, we teach um, sort of the basic skills of understanding the environment, taking uh, what we grow like in our hydroponics, the vegetables, the carrots, the greens, the tomatoes, taking it into the kitchen and teaching them cooking, which is also a science because you're mixing foods, understanding where food comes from. We have the hydroponics and we have the aquaponics, which the kids then see how uh, fish are surviving in water and the waste of fish is then sent to the plants. The plants regenerate that, becomes oxygen and other nutrients for plants and how the plants grow. Because when you look at Kuwait, Kuwait is dependent on export and import of products. Predominantly majority of our, um, what children see in the fresh food stalls in the market is all imported, unless they have Kuwait produce from Abdili or Wafra. And, but really they don't see that. So this is where science plays a significant role. Technology, when we are working with the interactive learning boards, every classroom has uh, like a big size gigantic, a big size gigantic iPad and it allows them to interact with the world above and um, also the connected world. When we talk about technology, we talk about sports because you're using all your body and it becomes like, you know, like robotics. Um, and you're learning how to use all your physical um, uh, abilities. With regards to the arts, we teach music at a professional level. We have true instruments uh, that children can actually practice on, guitars, wind instruments, and we actually have specialist teachers that come in and teach individually. Um, and of course, mathematics. Mathematics is the key, as science is, is the key to learning a lot of our skills of understanding the world of money, um, uh, exchanging, buying points when they've done something really well. So the whole energy uh, of learning within RBK is actually what is happening in the outside world. We brought the outside in for the child. In January 2016, the UN's Sustainable Development Goals began guiding policy and funding for the next 15 years, beginning with the historical pledge to end the global poverty everywhere. Riding the four pillars of education, no, and exactly we are talking about go live together and be second guest. And we have lots more, but now we are going to talk to Rudra Muhammad al saddah And it's all about the stuff that we talked about earlier and the stuff that we are going to talk about it right now, school and education and a lot more. Good evening and thank you so much for being with us. And thank you so much for uh, inviting me to your program. It's our pleasure to have you, colleague, just a while ago. You mentioned that you and Wafa al-Habib, that you went to the same school, and Hanana, same and major, and same year, and same university. Yes. The state of Kuwait University. We yes, we did. And you share the same the same views and the same higher education. Mm -hmm. What exactly we're talking about here? The education in the state of Kuwait. Are you satisfied with that or not? That's a quick question. It's not here in the paper. It's a tricky, it's a tricky question. Are you satisfied or not? Well, if Don't you Don't be diplomatic now. Be honest. <laughs> if you compare the um, the education, the government schools and the private schools, I do go in favor of the private schools uh -huh. because I think they are much stronger and they take good care of the students more than the government schools. Mm -hmm. And even the graduates of the private schools, you can see that they are enrolled in the um, well-known and the big universities around the world. Mm. Now, here's another one. When you try to evaluate the education in, in the state of Kuwait. Do you think that we are coping with the with the with the GCC countries, 
with the rest of the world regarding to provide the best education to our children. I'm not talking about the higher education, we're talking about from the kindergarten all the way to the higher education and so on. Unfortunately, I'm against that because you've seen the ranking of Kuwait among the, uh, the countries around the world. Uh -huh. it's, be it's becoming, you know, um, the education becoming, it's not the main, I think, element in Kuwait. I don't know why, mm -hmm. especially in the, private, in the government sector. And you can see the other countries where in before in the GCC, as you mentioned, like um, in Emirates, in Bahrain, and they used to take the expertise from Kuwait before. But now, no, they are ahead than Kuwait. As you are uh, an owner for a private school right here in the state of Kuwait, yeah. I believe that you have some kind of set of rules and goals you're trying to achieve. What exactly are we talking about here? Well, I can mention three goals that uh -huh. any owner of any private schools in Kuwait would, uh, would uh, go for that. First of all, as an owner of a British system school, uh, we're looking for first for providing with the best quality of education for the students. Uh -huh. This is the first goal. The second goal is to provide uh, uh, the best and the most appropriate leadership, which is very important, and the teachers to provide the best education to the students. The third one is that we have to ensure that to have a safe environment inside the school for the students and well equipped with the appropriate facilities and the educational needs so that they can manage when they educate the students. You mentioned something about teachers and I think that uh, the teacher is the cornerstone for the whole education system. No matter how good that you have the methods, books, learning, it's nothing when you have a failed teacher. Of course. What exactly you promote for the government to have some kind of a certain criteria to fit for the perfect teacher to deliver the information to our students? Well, That's a long question, isn't it? It is, it is. <laughs> well, it comes first of all, the leadership. Leadership? Yes. When you say leadership, we're talking all the way to the top of the ministry, or what are you talking about? Well, I'll take it on a small pace, which is, let's say, the school. Your, your school? Yes. The one you're representing? Yes, I do. Uh, the school has to have, you know, a very strong leadership so that they can appoint, you know, the, per the, the people under them who are very strong and they can run each one with its department. Mm -hmm. And from the leadership, you can appoint the, uh, the appropriate teacher. Mm. And the teacher, when you get it, first of all, he, ha he has to have the, um, the qualification that you need, plus the experience when you bring them, especially from abroad, they have to have a great experience in the subject that they are teaching. They should be passionate, dedicated to their commitment to the education, especially to the young ones, because when you start any country without education it cannot be right it cannot rise or be on the you know high rank countries because education is everything to the country if you have like if you take an example of singapore when they started with education and they sta the standard of education make it stronger and stronger look at them mashallah now so and they have to be honest and loyal and the school leadership should follow and continue the developing of the the professional uh, careers for the teachers. I'll give you an example. Like our school, we do have the uh, give courses to the teachers to abroad, just to give the expertise and service to other teachers, to just to lift the education. We're still we're still talking about the teacher here. Uh, you mentioned that you bring them from abroad, overseas, yes, like Europe, do. probably United States, United Kingdom, etc. Do you think that they have some kind of obstacles and difficulties to blend in our society or not? Because if they are kind of uh, weary and not happy, they are not going to deliver exactly what you want them to deliver. So do you facilitate everything for them or not? We do. You we do. do? Yes. Housing, transportation. Uh, I'll just give you an example. Now when we want to appoint any teacher in the school, we do have a committee from the school that goes to the UK, wow. set an appointment and interviews to the teachers, look at their qualifications, their experience, and then well, when, when you give them the contract, you have you know, to attract them to Kuwait. They don't have anything in Kuwait except the financial side. That's it. Just to be honest. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So when you give them a big salary, which is according to the scale in the UK, 
plus a furnished flat or a rent allowance, uh, plus um, when they arrive, the first day they arrive to Kuwait as a new teachers, they have like a small petty cash from the school so that they can manage with it before they receive their first salary. Mm. Plus some other allowances they will take. Your father has established the school you representing in the state of Kuwait. Yes. And I think that he put the first uh, stone and built uh, a monument in, edu in education in the state of Kuwait. you want to elaborate on that? Well, first of all, I'm so proud that my father is considered one of the... Uh, Muhammad al-Saddaq. Muhammad al-Saddaq. Yes. That he's one of the old educators, old teachers in Kuwait. He started his career as a teacher of mm -hmm. Islamic studies and Arabic. And then he became as a deputy head and then a head teacher. And after the career of education, he went into diplomacy to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm. He started there and he has been an ambassador to three countries, to uh, Morocco, to Jordan, and his last post was in Spain. Spain. Then, Habla español? Uh, un poquito. <laughs> <laughs> so after, because he has a lot of passion into education, he started his school in, in 1978. 1978? Yes. And you were at the university back then or not? No, I was in the primary school. Primary school? Yes. Okay, so he was preparing you to lead after him. Inshallah, after a long time, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Uh, we have a report regarding uh, an, an, a role model right here in the state of Kuwait uh, in education, and her name is uh, Latifa Al Barak. I'm not going to say more because we have this wonderful report and come back and don't go away. I'm going to study in the school. يعني صارنا عندنا صب قعدنا بالبيت طلبنا الشيخ يوسف مدير المعارف طلبني أنا وفاطمة الصالح وأول مريم عبد الملك أول مدرسة كويتية وبعدين سارة توحيد ثانية أنا الثالثة عشان كذي سووا مدرسة باسمي على حياتي لأني أنا من الأوائل المدرسات ورحت درست اشتغل حبيت المهنة كنت أدرس مدرساتي اللي درسوني هم اللي علموني شلون أحضر الدرس وشلون أدخل أصلح للبنات أول ما دخلت المدرسة الصاب البنات وقفوا حقي كان أتعجب ضحكت على نفسي شلون يقول لي أنا البنات قالوا لي أنت هيل أنت معلمة مثلنا حبي للمهنة هي اللي نجحت في حياتي وتربية عيالي حبي للمهنة صار عاد ما في حاجة حاجة مادية بس أنا معنويا أبي أحب أروح لل أبي أدرس أبي أختلط مع المدرسات أحب العمل عند من مدرسة لمدرسة لآخر شيء هني مدرسة النزهة أنا سكنت هني المدرسة هذه تو يبنونها أنا اللي استلمتها من ال من المهندس وفي ذيك الساعة في مر علينا تقشف في الكويت ما أدري حتى كانت مدرسة على الأسود ما طبقوها حتى نجيب عمال من إحنا بروحنا ينظفون وهذا واشتغلت فيها أحس إنها مثل بيتي أطلع منها أروح من هني أروح لها حتى مدرسات كأنهم بناتي كأنهم خواتي للحين علاقتي معهم سنين يعني أنا تدرت سنة أربعة ثلاثة وأربعين وخدت قاعد سبعة وسبعين أربعة وثلاثين سنة اشتقلت والحمد لله يعني مرتاحة مرتاحة ما قط انزعجت مثل ال ال يعني ملوا من التدريس ولا شيء لا لأني أي واحد يحب مهنة قلصي يبدع فيها أنا أقول لهم ما يخالف أنا ما عندي ما أنا أهتمهم بالموضة واللي بسيء لازم البنت تهتم البنت والولد لازم يهتمون بنفسهم ما يصير الإهمال والهذه طبعا ما, ما يصير لكن مو كل اهتمامهم لازم يفكرون بال بالمستقبل يفكرون بالبلد شنو تحتاج شنو وبعدين يكونون محترمين لازم يكونون حريصين على سمعة البلد مرمي قاصرة 
ابدا ما شفت مره مسكت شيء الا نجحت فيه Well, it's still with us here to the point, and let's go to the homeworks because lots of uh, parents right here in the state of Kuwait, they complain a lot reg regarding lots of homeworks, lots of assignments, and lots of presentation. Are you with or against more homeworks at home or not? Well, I'm in favor of the appropriate homework as long as it, long, as long as it is meets the needs of the each child mm. and I'm against you know with loading the kids with learning and repeating and taking loads and loads of assessments and projects just to as a part of the mark mm. especially now in this era which is the new era uh, that we are in the e-learning which is the technology I'm so proud to say that our school is the first in Kuwait and in the Gulf area to introduce the Chromebooks, which is the iPad run by Google. Mm. And we introduced this, this since uh, two years ago. And the students can interact inside the classrooms with their Chromebooks and the teacher. And they can forward the homeworks to the teacher's email. The, t the teacher